गुड मॉर्निंग दिस लेक्चर विल स्टार्ट विद द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स इन फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स एंड देन इन द लेक्चर टू वी विल स्टडी द विस्कस पोटेंशियल फ्लो थ्योरी इन थर्ड लेक्चर विल स्टडी द कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ हाइड्रोडायनेमिक स्टेबिलिटी एंड इंटरफेशियल कंडीशंस देन फॉर द लास्ट लेक्चर विल अप्लाई दोज कॉन्सेप्ट टू सॉल्व द the relative instability and kelvin helmholtz instability in the planar configuration now uh, we will start with the basic concepts fluid mechanics then the first question arises what is fluid mechanics and then what is fluid we will start with fluid fluid is a substance which continuously deforms on applying the shear stress okay one can say that it can flow continuously as a result of shear reaction we know that a matter has two states one is solid and second one is fluid the fluid can be written as fluid has two types basically liquid and gases so a solid can resist an applied force by deforming and a fluid deforms continuously under the influence of a force under the action of a shear stress you can say shear stress is basically force upon area so a fluid which can a fluid is a substance which basically continuously deforms under the action of shear stress then what is mechanics mechanics is the oldest physical science that deals with the body stationary and moving under the influence of force means we study the action of forces in on the body when either they are at rest or they are in motion then that branch basically deals with this these actions is known as the mechanics and the branch of mechanics which deals only with the bodies at rest only deals the action of forces at rest is, is called statics and uh, in motion the action of force on the bodies when bodies are in motion is called dynamics the fluid subcategory fluid mechanics is basically defined as the science that, that deals with the behavior of fluids at rest that is fluid statics and uh, in motion fluid dynamics uh, remember when we are dealing with, when we are saying fluid dynamics means we are dealing with the motion with, with dealing the fluids in motion clear so now what is fluid mechanics it is clear now we have newton's law of viscosity because we wish to categorize our fluids okay so remember when a fluid is flowing fluid always flows in layers so when fluid is flowing then first of of all we must know the no slip condition the no slip condition this condition says if we have a boundary and fluid is flowing then the adjacent layer to the boundary has the same velocity as the velocity of the boundary means that fluid layer will never slip on that boundary if the boundary is rigid then it has no flow means this the, lo the lowest layer the adjacent layer to the boundary will also be at rest one can say in other words the no slip condition can be written as there will be no relative velocity between the boundary and the adjacent layer so there will be no velocity if this is the rigid boundary then there will be no velocity to the adjacent layer then velocity will increase in this direction so the velocity will be like this one and the highest velocity at the upper level if the surface is free if this boundary is free then the highest velocity the fluid will attain highest velocity here that if fluid if this this boundary is rigid then the highest velocity will be in the middle of the basically layers in the middle layer so then if the fluid uh, is flowing then we have the velocity difference if this is y this is y and this is y plus dy here velocity is u and this is this velocity du 
then rate of strain will be du by dy and then if we apply the shear stress at the top of the fluid layers then that shear stress tau is directly proportional to the rate of strain du by dy this basically this is the mathematical expression and this is a well known newton's law of viscosity which says that stress on the fluid layers is directly proportional to the rate of shear stress if we taking the the proportionality constant then we have this mu which is known as the viscosity of the fluid viscosity can be defined as the measure of fluid resistance to the flow of one layer of fluid over the adjacent layer it is basically when two fluid layers are in motion then the lower layer always resists the motion of the upper layer that resistance can be measured in terms of viscosity and this uh, viscosity is basically known as dynamic uh, dynamic vis viscosity one viscosity again known as kinematic viscosity and this is basically uh, kinematic viscosity which can be written as nu that is mu by rho the ratio of dynamic viscosity to the density of the fluid now one can think what will be the dimension of this viscosity see a tau is force upon area that can be written as mu du by dy so force mlt minus 2 upon l square the the dimension of a then dimension mu we need to calculate then dimension of uh, basically uh, velocity is lt minus 1 upon l so l and this l minus 1 this is again so mu is m l minus 1 t minus 1. that will be the dimension of viscosity clear viscosity is basically it measures the resistance between the two layers now with the help of newton's law of viscosity we can categorize our fluids in two types in two parts one is newtonian fluid newtonian fluid and the second one is non newtonian fluid newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid in case of newtonian fluid if the relationship between tau and du by dy is linear then these fluid are known as newtonian fluid because this is a linear relationship one can say the fluids which obey the newton's law of viscosity is called newton's newton newtonian fluid if they do not obey if the fluids do not obey the newton's law of viscosity then they are called non newtonian fluids means relationship will not be linear here one can say that if we are taking that mu is zero means the fluids are inviscid so if we take fluids inviscid fluids or ideal fluids so for ideal fluids or inviscid fluids we take mu zero so tau equal to zero will be the uh, relation for ideal fluids so these are the ideal fluids which can lie on this line and also in case of shearing stress in, in case of elastic solid there will be no deformation so in that case du by dy will be zero and so du by dy will be zero on this one so this this line represents the elastic elastic solids these are the categories based on the newton's law of viscosity that we have one newtonian fluid and then non newtonian fluid then solid we have already discussed and then ideal fluids in which the viscosity is zero remember in real fluids the viscosity will not be exactly zero now incompressible fluid and based on the density depending on the temperature or the volume depending on the pressure one can say we can divide the fluids in two categories one is incompressible fluid if density does not change with the 
pressure here it is the volume does not change it actually density is the ratio of mass with volume so if volume changes mass is conserved so if volume changes density changes so if volume doesn't change with the external pressure then density will remain constant and these type of fluid are called fluids are called uh, incompressible fluid but if volume changes with the pressure that means density also changes with the pressure and in this 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 case the fluids are called compressible fluids in case of incompressible and compressible fluids we uh, basically in case of incompressible fluid generally liquids are incompressible and gases are compressible in case of gases one uh, number called mach number is very important then again with the base, base on the basis of viscosity we can categorize fluid into two types one is ideal fluids in which the viscosity is taking as zero while real fluid a viscous a fluid which has a non zero viscosity nevertheless it is a uh, maybe a very small viscosity but it will not be zero in all the fluids exist in the nature are viscous they are not inviscid ideal fluids are also called inviscid fluids while real fluids called viscous fluid while real fluids are called viscous fluids now if we study the flow behavior the flow motion and then how we can study that flow motion or flow properties in a fluid when it is in motion so we have two approaches one is allerian approach and the second one is lagrangian approach in allerian approach which is also known as a special description we take a fixed point and study the behavior of no density viscosity pressure temperature of the fluid particles passing through that point now in case of lagrangian description which is known as a material description we choose a fluid particle and uh, study the change in density viscosity pressure temperature by when that fluid particular fluid particle is moving from the different points actually the, the selection of that particle in complex fluids is almost impossible so that lagrangian approach is rarely used generally people use the allerian approach to study the flow behavior as already discussed in allerian description the attention is given to a point a fixed point in space and study the happening as time passes through when we choose a point and the particular and the fluid particles are passing through that point then we record the change in the density the change in pressure the change in temperature etc while in lagrangian description the attention is given to a particular fluid particle and we study the change in the density pressure why that uh, temperature of that particular particle when it passes through different points and we observe the happening to the particle it moves so in allerian method a fixed point is chosen instead of a particular fluid particle and study all the fluid properties that passes through this fixed point see this one this approach is the allerian approach here we choose a fixed point point is fixed and we the different fluid particles are passing through from there and we record all the changes in the density or whatever physical parameter we wish to we want to compute we calculate the change in particular fluid parameter but in lagrangian approach a lagrangian approach we just fix a, a fluid particle and we calculate the change in the physical variable when that particular uh, fluid particle is moving for example just to put uh, one or one place in a river and study the uh, change in the physical parameters uh, for all those fluid particles which are passing through that point so it will be a an allerian approach 
now just take uh, basically just we can but uh, choose a particular fruit particles and going through all the points in the river in that case it will be a lagrangian approach so generally people are using allerian approach in this lecture uh, we will derive the equation of continuity equation of motion that will be also based on the allerian approach now then the local and material derivative this is an important concept in the study of fluid mechanics the if phi xt is any physical quantity in allerian description then the partial derivative of phi with respect to time is called the local time derivative simply del phi by del t but if f is any physical quantity in lagrangian description then the partial derivative of with respect to time again is called the material derivative remember in allerian approach it will be local derivative in lagrangian approach it will be it, it is called material derivative now in the next we will show the relation between this lagrangian material derivative and with the allerian local time derivative see if we have a quantity like this f of x y z t we are taking in the planar geometry so if we we wish to calculate the total uh, derivative uh, then we can write df is del f by del x dx del f by del y dy del f by del z dz plus del f by del dz plus del f by del t dt then we can write df by dt as del f by del x dx by dt del f by del y dy by dt plus del f by del z dz by dt plus del f by del t del f by del t del f by del t okay now taking as t tends to infinity this del t dt tends to infinity this d by dt is the velocity component in x direction dy by dt is the velocity component in y direction and dz by dt is the velocity component in z direction so this can be written as u del f by del t plus u del f by del x plus v del f by del y plus w del f by del z that means if we wish to write this one this can be written as a basically dot product of two vectors so that will be basically this t by dt is there and then it is ui plus vj plus wk and then divergence of f del f by del x i cap del f by del y j cap del f by del z k cap and so we can write this one as del f by del t plus q dot grid f here see this is the local derivative local time derivative in the uh, allerian description this d by dt material derivative can be represented by d by dt or small d by dt both are the notations of material derivative so this material derivative d by dt can be written as the local derivative plus convective derivative this term is known as convective derivative d by dt is material derivative or partic particle derivative differentiation following the fluid particle motion then del by del t is local time derivative differentiation to variation differentiation of variation to time at a point and q dot grid is convective derivative so the material derivative is the sum of the local derivative and convective derivative after that we will study the types of flows now the we, now it is clear the, how many types of fluids we will discuss earlier then we have calculated the um, basically uh, material derivative now if we wish to calculate acceleration at a uh, particular fluid motion then we can if we have the velocity q we can directly calculate dq by dt that means it is del q by del t plus q dot grid q it is the that acceleration of the fluid particles uh, if velocity is given we can easily calculate either in planar geometry 
because this quantity is given in the vector uh, form so we can uh, make we can change it into the planar geometry in cylindrical geometry as well as in the spherical geometry now when the fluids are in motion then we say that fluids are flowing so we have different types of fluid flows one is steady and unsteady if during the motion of the fluid if the fluid parameter do not change with time then that flow is called steady flow if they are depending on time if the fluid parameters are depending on time then we say it is an unsteady flow okay so difference between steady and unsteady is basically whether the flow parameters are depending on time or not then uniform and non uniform flow change of fluid characteristic with respect to space agar if in case of space coordinates if fluid characteristic fluid parameters are changing it will be a non uniform flow if they are not changing it will be uniform flow then laminar and turbulent flow if the fluid particles are flowing in a line then in layers then it is a laminar flow if fluid particles with the flow is zigzag flow then it is called uh, basically a uh, turbulent flow for example just take smoke rises from a cigarette um, for some time it goes in a straight line that will be laminar flow and then after that it abrupts and the flow becomes zigzag this will be the turbulent flow this is again a case of the transition of flow from laminar to turbulent then rotational and irrotational flow see when fluids are flowing the fluid part if the fluid particles are not rotating about their axis when they are in motion then the flow is called irrotational if they are rotating about their axis the flow is called rotational remember in case of irrotational flow the orticity is zero curl of q their rotational vector will be zero because they are not rotating in case of irrotational flow so if curl of q is zero and as we know that the flow uh, region is uh, continuous then that q can be written as gradient of some potential function so in this case potential function uh, exists therefore the irrotational flow is also known as potential flow remember irrotational flow uh, is also called potential flow the stream function exists for both the rotational flow as well as the irrotational flow now then as we know that fluids has two types one is liquid and second one gases okay generally liquids are incompressible and uh, gases are compressible so liquids are very difficult to compress and often regarded as incompressible but occupies a fixed volume and will take the shape of the container a free surface is formed if the volume of container is greater than the liquid in gases easy to compress no fixed volume it changes volume to expand to fill the containing vessel and then completely fill the vessel so that no free space is formed remember the compressibility will depend on the mach number mach number that m can be written as v by c v velocity of the fluid and c is the velocity of the sound so if mach number is very small then the fluid can be regarded as incompressible fluid like water vapor or we can say steam the steam has mach number is very very small so steam can be regarded as a basically uh, Mm, incompressible now then how we can study the fluid mechanics if we want to study a fluid flow the flow characteristic of a fluid when it is in motion then which type of equations we need to use first of all we have to is to use the conservation of mass that is the continuity equation then ehlers equation it is the equation of motion for inviscid fluids then neves flow equation that is called conservation of momentum again 
never store equation changes to other equation for inverse truth means if you put mu equal to 0 in never store equation will get the other equation so these two equations basically represents the equation of momentum other equation for inverse truths never store equation for the viscous truths and then the energy equation conservation of energy which is given by bernoulli equation now if we wish to study the heat transfer we need to use the uh, diffusion equation also so here we will study the continuity equation continuity equation basically says the mass is conserved so it is an equation represents transport transport of some quantity mass momentum energy and other natural quantities are conserved under their under their respective conditions of course the question of continuity says the mass is always conserved for equation of the equation of continuity for three dimensions is written as this one here i have written the case of planar geometry if you think we can just write in the terms of vector quantities the uh, rho by del t then divergence of rho q equal to zero this equation is the equation of continuity in the vector form it is the equation of continuity in the vector form so the continuity equation is applicable for study unstudy uniform non-uniform compressible and incompressible fluid remember this is the equation of continuity which can be applicable for any fluid in motion means you can use it for the newtonian as well as for the non-newtonian fluid so if the flow is steady then we can just take del rho by del t as zero because we know that in a steady flow the flow characteristic will not depend on time so del rho by del t is zero then equation becomes this one in vector form we can say divergence of rho q is equal to zero divergence of rho q equal to zero for incompressible fluid for incompressible fluid we know that density remains constant the volume will not change with the external pressure so density remain constant and as density remain constant then definitely del rho by del t is zero and in that case the equation arises at divergence of rho q equal to zero as rho is constant divergence of q equal to zero that is the equation of continuity for incompressible fluids that is for liquids this equation of continuity that is net mass of fluid flowing across boundaries into an element over a short period must be equal to the amount by which the mass of the of element increases during the same period that means mass always remains conserved that is basically equation of continuity says then we come to the equation of motion See, other equation of motion is basically equation which represents to the momentum equation for inviscid fluids. So in this case, the only pressure force and the fluid weight or in general, the body force are assumed to be acting on the mass of the fluid. Of course, pressure force is taking here because we are considering the fluids are inviscid. So if fluids are inviscid, there will be no viscous force in the flow, flow field. So mass of the fluid in the medium considered as this one density into volume and then component of body body force it is an external force body force that is applied is the external force so this fg is the external force or you can say it is the gravitational force and this is the pressure force then net pressure force acting on this one is minus del p by del x and this is the Value element. So force per unit area is minus del P by del X. And so for other equation of motion in X direction, we can just write it one as X minus one by rho del P by del X AX, where X is the component of acceleration in X direction, which can be written as if Q is the velocity of the fluid, it can be written as UI plus VJ plus wk then ax will be du by dt so the acceleration the equation of uh, alert equation of motion in uh, planar geometry 
the x component says du by dt is x minus 1 by rho del p by del x and dv by dt is equal to y minus 1 by rho del p by del x in z direction it is dz by dt equal to z minus 1 by rho del p by del x here d by dt represents material derivative if you wish to write it this equation into vector form we can write this one as dq by dt is equal to force minus rho gradient f or one can say sorry one by rho this is not this is one by rho gradient f this is the alert equation of motion in vector form now these uh, the ax ay are termed as total acceleration that ax is the material derivative of u and understand ax and then ax this will be a y this should be a y this is a y is del v by del t plus u del v by del x plus v del v by del y plus w del v by del z and this one a z is equal to is equal to uh, del w by del t plus u del w by del x plus v del w by del y plus w del w by del z these are uh, the other equations are applicable for the compressible or incompressible for all type of fluids uh, remember we cannot take viscosity in the uh, flow region so these are the alert equation of motion now we will uh, compute the newell stowe equation but before that we must know what are these stresses so can we we will use the effect of viscosity into the uh, flow field the stresses are basically force per unit area the normal component of stress is known as normal stress and the tangential component is known as shearing stress the pressure is the normal stress in the fluid at rest remember stresses means we can take the viscous stresses in a flow field with the viscosity we will have the component of viscous stresses and those i so i j can be written as mu del u i upon del x j plus del u j upon del x i with that we can use the basically uh, the action of viscosity into a flow field zero shear stress of fluid at rest is at a state of zero shear stress if u i and u j both are zero so i j will be zero then we can we are now able to derive the nevesto equation so for the nevesto equation it is generalization of alert equation of motion alert equation of motion for inviscid fluids nevesto equation will be for the question of motion for viscous fluids so in that case we will take this equation as like this for incompressible fluid we are deriving it so we will have rho dq by dt dq by dt is equal to rho f the external force minus gradient of t plus divergence of tau tau is the stresses in the flow field it is known as tau or basically viscous stresses the effect of viscosity will be combined with the yeah, combined with this force remember for the incompressible fluid this divergence of tau will become del square q so we'll have equation like this one but this is the most general equation which can be applied for a newtonian or even non newtonian fluid depending on their stress related with the strain as in the case of incompressible fluid we know that tau uh, and uh, the rate of strain has a linear relationship so we'll get this term here yeah, this is the exactly this term for the x component then for the y component and then the z component in vector notation they can write you one can write this equation like this one remember in this case there is no external force it is 
विदाउट एक्सटर्नल फोर्स दिस इक्वेशन रिटर्न इन वेक्टर फॉर्म इज विदाउट एक्सटर्नल फोर्स विदाउट एक्सटर्नल फोर्स इज देयर वी मस्ट हैव टू ऐड रो एफ नाउ देन द इक्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी द बर्नौली इक्वेशन बर्नौली इक्वेशन इज रिलेटेड विद द प्रेशर वेलोसिटी एंड एलिवेशन चेंज ऑफ अ फ्लूड इन मोशन so in ideal fluids remember this bernoulli equation is used in the irrotational fluid flow motion this can be applied for the steady as well as unsteady flow in the case of steady flow this equation is given by this one p by rho plus v square by 2 plus gz equal to constant but when we apply it for the inviscid sorry unsteady fluid unsteady flow in that case flow must be irrotational this can be applied for rotational flow also but for irrotational flow we can apply the uh, bernoulli equation in unsteady case in that case this equation can be written as minus del phi by del t plus gradient phi mod whole square by 2 plus gz plus p by rho is equal to ft that t will depend on time also remember in case of unsteady flow we can apply uh, bernoulli equation only when the flow is a rotation and then the bernoulli equation is also called the law of conservation of energy we stated earlier and the applications there are so many applications in the bernoulli equation that the in the venturi meter fighter tube we can use bernoulli equation directly these are the basic concepts in fluid mechanics now in the next lecture we will apply basically we will study the viscous potential flow theory in which the flow will be irrotational and we will apply the bernoulli equation to calculate the pressure at the interface in case of viscous potential flow thank you